Hell yeah, now we're gaming. Sorry, I had to. Hi, Moglets. Today we're going over the version 4.4 special program. Redemption codes will be in the comments below. Currently, we're watching the trailer. It's very Leo F focused. As usual, it looks amazing. They're always on point with their trailers. We got a couple new characters. I don't think this guy is actually pronounced gaming, but um, we'll see later. And the other new character, which I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce right now, I believe right now is the human form of Cloud Retainer, but we'll see later. The boy, I don't think we've seen much, if any, at all in the actual game. Cloud Retainer, though, obviously was a pretty big part of the Leo S story. I think Lantern Rite is soon again, so it makes sense. Okay, I think it's actually Jaming. So Jaming is a pyro greatsword user. Overall, he seems to be more of a DPS than anything else. He does have a pretty interesting self-damage, self-recovery system, like a lot of the Fontaine characters. His main attack seems to be some sort of special plunging attack that can't be overridden by other elements, and upon landing, he'll consume some of his own HP. And then, while I don't think they specifically say it, I believe his burst then lets him recover some HP. But from the information they gave us so far, it does seem like he is just a main DPS. He doesn't appear to have any, like, off-field pyro, like maybe Toma, or any sort of other support abilities. And unfortunately, most four-star DPSs are just kind of overlooked, but we'll see. But now moving on to the one I think we are all a little more excited for, Cloud Retainer. Wow. Okay, so they haven't like officially gotten to her yet, but they've shown some gameplay snippets and we're talking about her a little bit. She sounds incredibly cool already. She has these like double, triple jumps and then she can use plunge attacks. So I guess she's also going to be a bit of a plunge character, but the thing is, she can apply this status to other allies, so everyone can be a plunge character now. That's actually so cool. And one of the other developers were talking about her exploration abilities, and yeah, I mean, when you can jump three times, it's gonna be actually pretty nice. This developer part's actually really nice. They're talking about all the problems they had actually developing her. It seems primarily with this jumping slash elemental skill ability. We will, of course, be getting a new story quest for Cloud Retainer to learn more about her. Also, by the way, I'm not gonna comment on her design or people are gonna call me a simp. Look at that though, all the jumping and dashing around. It's so cool. Yeah, there it is. Up to three special sky ladder leaps. Wow. During her final two leaps, you can actually choose to just plunge to the ground or go forward. Oh, she's also a passive healer. Her ultimate like does a healing field and gives every character in this field increased jump height. So like literally everyone can plunge. It seems like the plunge will always be animo damage. That could actually be really interesting. Like you could, I guess, give anyone viridescent and would that, no. Wait, what? She might have some other sort of buffs in there, but again, they just don't go into much details. But from what they've shown us so far, she looks like an absolutely amazing and fun character. I have a team specifically for exploration, you know, getting to one, one place or another quickly. She is definitely guaranteed to have a spot there at the very least. But imagine there can be some really interesting teams with her as well. You know, especially like greatsword characters that typically have pretty high plunge multipliers. Eh, I mean, they do show Diluc there, which kind of makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I imagine she can make some really interesting things possible. Oh no, why would they put her with Nahida? Oh boy, that's sad. For anyone that doesn't have Nahida, this is gonna be a very hard choice. Nahida is definitely one of the top tier characters. Cloud Retainer looks so interesting and cool though. And some of Nahida's early constellations are also really, really amazing. So even those that maybe have a C0 or C1 Nahida, I am of course going for Cloud Retainer, but that it's 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 unfortunate they decided to pair Nahida with her. Oh, I actually didn't even think about that, but uh, since we're getting a new five-star catalyst, she's obviously a catalyst user. Animal Catalyst. Phase two, we have Xiao and Miko. I really, really wish one of those would have been with Cloud Retainer instead of Nahida, and then Nahida in phase two, but um, I don't know. They probably know what they're doing. Seems like we'll be getting a new area as well, Yilong Wharf. It's also apparently like a border to Fontaine, which is really interesting. I'm not sure how that works right now because Leo and Fontaine are pretty far apart, but I guess there could just be like a bridge here or something. Oh, there is a really long river as well. There are actually a lot of different areas. It seems to be a pretty big map expansion here. Seems to be a new world boss as well. Almost looks like a mini wolf boss. We'll most likely need to defeat this boss for materials for Cloud Retainer. Okay, but apparently in English it's Gaming based on this clip here. Inquiry Gaming. So again, because Lantern Rite's coming back soon, the main event is going to be focusing on that a lot. We'll be playing with kites, new outfits for Ganyu and Shinha, and a new outfit for Singcho. That's surprising. There's the Singcho outfit, looking quite Farina-esque actually, but pretty dapper. I feel like there's a bit of material missing from Ganyu's, but uh, overall it's 
Overall, it's fine. I really like Shinha's color scheme. Still kind of has that black, white, gold going on. A few red accents here and there as well. Singcho's is free via the event. We'll have three main activities this event. It's usually four, but three this time. With the first one, we'll be using paper shadows to go foraging for tasty food. Okay, I've played like little flash games sort of similar to this. It's a bit of a puzzle game. I think we also had one somewhat similar. Looks like it does get more complex over time though. Next event appears to be co-op. Looks like some sort of competitive coin collecting. Actually looks pretty nice. Then you can like be a bumper car and and knock into other players. <laughs> there are three different stages, so basically three little like co-op slash competitive mini games. The first one we just saw is like bumper car slash coin collecting. Then we got race to the top, kind of like a territory game here. Then for the last one, we have to stay inside these safe zones. Last one's out in the world. You're being transformed into this thing and aiming and trying to collect these things. You can see what's happening on the screen. And we'll be getting another free four star Leoa character. It seems like they're almost only doing these free four stars for Leoa, where, where you can choose one, but I mean, it's usually on Lantern, right? So I guess that makes sense, but still pretty cool. I think most of mine here are C6, so I'd probably pick up a gaming. 10 free intertwined fates from logging in is always nice. And now for the mini events, we have receiver of friends from afar. Appears to be a cooking mini game. You gotta stop the needle at the right spot. But perhaps the bigger point is that we'll be hosting characters from afar, the other sort of continents, Fontaine, Sumeru, etc. Next event, we got journey through hill enigmatic terrain. We'll apparently be either disguising ourselves as a hill churl or controlling the minds of a hill churl to infiltrate their camps and study their statues. I don't know what's going on, but basically I guess a stealth event. Oh, mixed with combat as well. Apparently at the end of it, you'll fight this big, big Sam churl. Some pretty interesting combat mechanics here as well. Then we got Triumphant Frenzy, a combat event. I love those. Oh, it's almost randomized in a way. You can pick from four of six random characters. That seems interesting. TCG update, the four drums temper will be available again. Oh yeah, that's right. I actually saw some Reddit posts about this and I was planning on making a sort of separate video for it. This is actually really cool as well. We are finally getting artifact loadouts. That is insanely cool for me in particular because I'm always messing everything up with my characters. We have quick loadout and custom loadout. With quick loadout, I think it's just a one tap thing and it'll give them artifacts that are sort of recommended or, you know, it'll make them an okay character. And then with custom, you can really fine tune it. I'm not quite as excited for this as I would be if it was like a true custom loadout, like you could choose the exact artifacts and just click a button and wherever those artifacts are, they get them back when you wanna use them, you know? Maybe with the custom loadout, you could make it specific enough so where it would give them like the artifacts you would want them to have, but we'll have to wait till it's in the game and check that out. I think will still be very useful for me when I just wanna, you know, have a character in my team that I haven't used in a while and they're just not really built. So I still think it'll definitely be a useful thing. I just wish they would introduce actual loadouts where we would click a button and those five exact artifacts you set would be equipped on them, regardless of wherever else they are. Okay, we're apparently gonna be getting a ka phone from OnePlus. I am unfortunately primarily an iOS user and I have enough Androids, otherwise I would buy it immediately. Apparently they're also optimizing gameplay on phones in general, but apparently with this OnePlus specific ka phone, it'll be even better. But yeah, that was it for the special program. Gotta say Cloud Retainer is the thing I'm most excited about, but the artifact loadouts, even though it's not exactly what I was wishing for, I still think are gonna be really useful and I'm looking forward to checking out that feature as well. But yeah, let me know what you think about 4.4 in the comments down below. Thanks, as always for watching and until next time.